Have you ever thought about how your React components can easily react to things happening around them, like getting new data every time something happens, or handling components that can dynamically update and respond to real-time events? Well, that's what use effect is for. This powerful hook is the secret sauce that helps your parts manage side effects and respond to changes easily. Today, we're exploring use effect, how it works, why we need it, and we'll present real-world scenarios that show when and why you'll want to use use effect. So let's get started. We can describe use effect as a React hook that lets you run side effects. A lot of people are confused about what exactly side effects are. Well, in simple terms, side effects are actions in your code that happen outside of rendering the UI. So what do we mean by that? For example, think about when you're making food and you have a timer in the kitchen to alert you when to check on it. Your main goal is to make the meal just right. So you set a timer for every three minutes. And each time it rings, you should check on the food you are making. In this case, your timer influences you to check on the food at regular intervals, causing what we call a side effect, an action that results from a primary task. In this case, the timer's influence on your checking behavior. This concept can be applied to everything in React. For example, you may need to fetch new data every time the top list changes, so you can show an updated list to your users. We can understand this better on a deeper level once we grasp how use effect works at a fundamental level. Before React introduced hooks, class components were the primary way to manage side effects and lifecycle methods in React applications. Developers used lifecycle methods like component did mount, component did update, and component will unmount. For example, when we want to fetch data from the API based on the user ID prop, we would need to separately define what happened when the component first renders, and then check for side effects, such as the changes of the ID and component did update, to fetch new data. But now, since we have the use effect hook, this process is simplified. The syntax of the use effect hook is very easy to remember. You just declare use effect, and inside you place an arrow function in an array. Inside this arrow function is where your side effect code runs. In our earlier example, this is where you fetch new data when the user ID changes. But how does use effect know when the user ID changes? Well, your use effect needs to depend on something to know whether it should run the side effects or not. That's why use effect has what we call dependencies. So, the array we added earlier is for your dependencies. And inside this array is where you place the variables or props that your effect function depends on. If any of these dependencies change between renders, the effect function will rerun. And in our case, it's the user ID. So every time the user ID changes, the use effect hook will fetch new data based on that user ID. Now, we don't have to manually declare each lifecycle method like in class components. This is why use effect is so useful in terms of saving time and improving code readability. We can see this more in things that require to refresh data, like building a weather app. Weather apps rely heavily on timely and accurate data to provide users with up-to-date weather information, ensuring that users always have the latest weather updates based on location without having to manually refresh the app. When we first open the app, use effects will run right away and fetch the data from the API and show the weather information for New York as it is our default location. However, if we input another location, it will now fetch new data based on the location submitted by the user. Use effect is also very important when we need to update the component's state immediately after the data changes. For example, in a financial app where every second counts, we want to display the numbers immediately after the data changes. In this example, we use use effect hook to fetch the stock price every second. So we use the set interval function to get the stock price every second. But as we examine more closely, this use effect also uses a return function. What exactly is happening here? Well, use effect have a third property called the cleanup function. The cleanup function works when the component is about to be removed from the DOM. This prevents memory leaks that can cause the application to consume more memory over time, leading to slower performance or even crashes. Like for our earlier example, we use the cleanup function to stop fetching data when the user navigates away from the page or the component is removed from the screen. This will lessen our API calls and in return, lessen the burden on the app and API expenses. Let's look at a simple example to understand this better. Like for instance, you wanted to build a online or offline status feature for your app. You think about wanting to let people know if they're online or not. So first, you would need to make a state that saves the value of the navigator dot online. This feature tells you if the browser is online or not. It gives back true value if the browser is connected to the internet and false value if it isn't. Now this is where the magic happens. Using the use effect hook, we can immediately trigger window.addEventListener to subscribe to the online and offline events. These events fire whenever there's a shift in network connectivity, whether the user goes offline or hops back online. But what happens if the user closes the app or switches tabs? 
No worries. The cleanup function in use effect makes sure that when the component is no longer in use, these event listeners are automatically removed, preventing memory leaks or unnecessary tests from running in the background. This method allows you to monitor a user's connection status in real time without putting extra strain on your app. In simple terms, the cleanup function in React's use effect hook is a function that runs when the component is about to be removed or before the effect runs again. The purpose of this is to free up resources by doing things like stopping event listeners, turning off timers, or canceling network requests. This helps stop memory problems and avoids doing things that are not needed. It's like putting an automatic break for your use effect hook. Because if you didn't know, use effect can be pretty dangerous to your app when you don't know what you're doing. That's why in this section, we'll go over the two common pitfalls when using use effect in your app. We all understand that use effect depends whenever your dependency's data changes. But if you include a dependency variable in use effect that changes frequently, such as every 0.01 seconds, and you fetch data from an API within that effect, it can lead to significant and costly mistakes. This setup would result in excessive API calls, dramatically increasing network traffic, and potentially incurring high costs if the API has usage limits or charges per request. We don't want to hit the API calls limit over and over again, right? So to fix this, it's crucial to implement a timer or debounce function to control how often the effect runs. Additionally, incorporating a cleanup function to cancel pending requests before initiating new ones can prevent overlapping calls and reduce unnecessary resource consumption. This approach ensures that your application remains efficient and cost-effective, avoiding performance bottlenecks and financial pitfalls. So the number one pitfall to avoid is failing to check your dependencies array. The second pitfall to avoid when using use effect is overlooking the importance of cleaning up side effects. Think about making a chat app where every user connects to a server to get messages instantly. You would need to create the WebSocket connection using use effect so that it connects when the component loads. But if you don't close the connection when the component is removed, the WebSocket stays open, using up resources and possibly causing memory issues. This is especially likely if users often move between different chat rooms or pages. Just imagine thousands of unused web sockets left open. It's crazy to think about the immense burden that would place on the app server. So to avoid this problem, you should use the cleanup function in use effect. This will make sure that the web socket connection is closed properly when the component is removed or when the user changes to a different chat room. In real life, if you don't close connections, a lot of connections can stay open even after the user has left the website. This could make the app slow, use too much memory, or even stop working, especially if many people are using it. Cleaning up properly helps the app run well and stay stable, no matter how often users move between different parts or pages. So in short, always use the cleanup function when you need to break or terminate ongoing processes when dealing with side effects in use effect. And I know we've discussed a lot of concepts today, which is why we've made a PDF version of this video. It's free, but we would really appreciate any support you give to the channel. This is just the second part of mastering React hooks in an easy way. We will still discuss use context, use ref, use callbacks, and more in future videos. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on these exciting developments and stay tuned for what's next. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.